All right, this lesson talks about zeros and their multiplicity. Uh, when I talk about multiplicity, it means how many times a zero sort of pops up after I factor out uh, a polynomial function. So if I have y is equal to x to the fourth minus x to the third minus 10x squared plus 4x plus 24, eventually I can graph it and find out that it has zeros at negative 2, negative 2, 2, and 3. Seems like a mistake, doesn't it? Like, I shouldn't have negative 2 and negative 2, but it absolutely does happen. And the reason is if you factor it, or the proof, I should say, not the reason, the proof is when I factor it out all the way, I end up with x plus 2 times x plus 2 times x minus 2 times x minus 3. This is the factored form of this polynomial. Um, so if you took the zeros, you'd get these answers. Now, the multiplicity would be how often those zeros happen. This x minus 2, so this 2, I would say that it has a multiplicity of 1, because it only happens one time. Whereas I would say that negative 2 has a multiplicity of 2. And the neat thing is, uh, you can get a big picture about what's going, you can get an interesting picture of what's going to happen based on the multiplicity itself. So let's look at it in terms of a graph. Now, uh, I said that I had negative 2, and I'm just going to do a little multiplicity chart here. It's got a multiplicity of 2, negative, what is it? Oh, sorry, it's positive 2, and a multiplicity of 1 and positive 3 had a multiplicity of 1. Now, these numbers, or multiplicity, sort of give you a small idea of the relationship that occurs at the x-axis. So at negative 2, right in here somewhere, I'm actually going to think of it like at this x value, it's almost like it's x squared. So you sort of have that, um, you know, bit of curvature that you're looking for. Let's just graph it, and it'll be easier to see. x to the fourth minus x to the third minus 10x squared plus 4x was it plus 24 I think yeah And because it has a positive first coefficient and it's even, it should have this kind of going down feel to it. Let me change the window. I think that might make a big difference here. So let's say it's uh, negative 7 and positive 7. It's easy to set the windows when you have zeros because those are the x values. You kind of set them around. And then I'll do, I don't know, negative 20 and 20. As you can see, at this zero, it kind of goes up and it bounces back, more like it's uh, sort of a quadratic. The quadratic, uh, the general form of a quadratic, if you have like a y is equal to x squared thing going on, what you're dealing with is this. Well, it's the same thing. It's like a mini version of that because it has a multiplicity of 2. So at that negative 2, the graph sort of does this and then bounces back up. But you'll notice when I only have a multiplicity of 1, it goes right through. So it's much more linear in fashion. So if I have y equals x, see how it sort of just jams through the x-axis? Well, that means that positive 2 and positive 3, you're sort of dealing with, as you can see right there, and probably goes way up here and then back down, kind of cuts through and then cuts through again. So this is the point I'm looking at, and so is this and this. So that gives me a general idea of what the graph's going to look like, and it makes this statement much easier to make. If I'm looking at multiplicities, <laughs> if my multiplicity is even, then it's actually going to bounce off the x-axis, so it's not going to cross it. If it's odd, like say it was, there was a multiplicity of 3 here, so uh, plus 3 was a factor 3 times, or a 0 3 times, then I could say that it's going to cross the x-axis, because the relationship is there. Let's look at 
one more. So this x to the fifth minus 6x to the fourth plus 5x to the third. Uh, what I'm going to do first is sort of factor out x to the third, of course. End up with x, minus, x squared minus 6x to the first power plus 5. So when I factor that out, it gives me x minus 5 and x minus 1. And I set all these equal to zero. And I get x equals five, x equals one, but I get x equals zero, but not only does it happen once, it happens three times. So I end up with an odd multiplicity, which could make for a very interesting graph and should if my statement is true earlier, mean that it crosses through at zero. But if we'll look at it a little bit more closely, I should also mention that when you have a y is equal to x to the third power, you have a cubic set. It sort of looks like this. So let me graph this really quickly. We'll take a, a look at it. And you'll see that it sort of ends up looking more uh, strangely close to that at the actual x. So let's just look at the graph and you'll sort of maybe get an idea of what I'm talking about, assuming I have any idea what I'm talking about. What I was trying to say is that if we look at how many times a, a, a zero exists, it gives us a, a look at, a little microcosmic look at what happens at that exact zero. Like that's a less nerdy explanation than what I had before, but oh well, I'm already into it, so why not? So 5x to the third and then I'm going to graph this puppy and hopefully it doesn't totally uh, mess up because I've done it so weirdly. So it'll come out, it'll have a, an x at 0 and it'll have an x at 1 and then at 5. The key here, the 5 is obvious, I mean it just it's very linear even though it's got this little clip that's a calculator thing. What I want to do is zoom in here right on the origin and I may have to zoom in a couple times. As you can see, going down at one, it just kind of falls through. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't sort of stop there at all. There's no, it doesn't bounce back up like if it was a one happened twice as a zero. Let me zoom in one more time, and then maybe you can see what I'm talking about with the x to the third thing. Now, as you can see, unlike x to the fifth or x uh, equals one, not x to the fifth, x equals five or x equals one, where it ran through. It gets through eventually, but it sort of has that feel of a, a y equals x to the third. So in a way, I'm going to do it one more time, just giving a really good look at it. I bet this will sort of mess it up. I'm like, become, I've become obsessed with the idea. Yeah, see, it went too far there. Yeah, you can only do it so much. But the idea is that it sort of has this feel right at that moment of this x to the third. It doesn't quite go straight over like if it was to the first. It does it to the third. Whereas if it was x to the fourth, it would probably look only at that part of the graph. So say I had uh, a negative two and I had that four times. So I had essentially x plus two to the fourth somewhere in the factored form. It would probably look a lot like this, but only right at negative two. So the general rule is Enough of that. Uh, the general rule is that if you have an even number, or if you have multiple zeros, and which is to say that you have zero that has multiplicity, or it happens more than once, if it's an even number, it's probably not going to go through the x-axis. It's just going to bounce back. And that's just the nature of the graphs that form when you have uh, like a quadratic or a quartic or you know power to the sixth graph. Similarly, if you have an odd number, so you only have one of them, you have th three of them, five of them, whatever, it's actually going to cross over the x-axis. So that's multiplicity and multiple zeros. It does happen due to the factored form. and also gives you a nice little look at what the graph's going to do in the, uh, what the graph's going to do once it gets to that zero in relationship to the x-axis. And by that I mean in relation to the x-axis, in relationship, that made no sense. Sorry. Anyway, good luck.